Hi there, welcome to today's video. I'm so excited to be sitting down with you guys because in today's video, we are going to be talking about 10 ways that you can reduce bloat overnight. Hi there, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jessica. I'm a holistic nutritionist and a nutritional therapy practitioner. And here on my channel, we cover all things mom life. However, everything we do here in my space does have a bit of a healthy twist. So I took a poll over on Instagram and I asked you guys what you were most interested in seeing for my upcoming videos. And the topic of reducing bloating won with hundreds and hundreds of votes. So I'm excited to dig in and talk all things bloat because we are all so familiar with that feeling, that uncomfortableness that comes with eating a large indulgent meal. Perhaps we're traveling or maybe we scarfed our lunch down too quickly while on Instagram on our lunch break. We've all been in those situations where we had a little bit of an uncomfortableness in our digestive system. Also, there are many people who suffer from chronic bloat and those feelings of bloating on a daily basis. And I want to ensure you that there is definitely a better way and I can't wait to share some of my favorite tips and tricks, 10 of them to be exact, of ways that we can help you combat bloating overnight. So frequent bloating is often caused by a buildup of gas in the digestive system or the gut. And we're very familiar with that feeling, right? Like something is trapped as if we have a rock in our stomach or that overall look of bloat. Oftentimes, so many of my clients in my nutrition practice will say that by the end of the day, they can look five to seven months pregnant, where in the morning, their stomach is perfectly flat. So what's happening here is that we do know that there is good and bad bacteria, of course in our digestive system. And when the good bacteria is feeding on foods, we typically can break these down and assimilate these faster, unless it is a food that tends to cause a little bit more digestive muscle. So those raw foods, potentially cruciferous vegetables. Then there are those foods that may be a bit more indulgent, that take a little bit more oomph to break down. And that's when things can become a little bit problematic. Certain foods and certain ingredients can cause a bit more digestive stress and bloat and others do. So this is why it's really important to feel intuitive within our bodies and know which foods that our body loves, craves, and finds to be easily digestible, especially if you are somebody who's currently struggling with chronic bloat. Oftentimes we're just running around, we're eating our foods, we have a full calendar and a to-do list that we're not really conscious and aware of the foods that cause a bit more uncomfortableness than others. That's why when I'm working with my one-on-one -on -one clients or the ladies in my group course, Moms Need to Be Healthy Too, I have them track and keep a weekly journal. This is where the magic starts to happen. When we can put on our investigator cap and pay attention to our foods and how they make us feel, we can begin to pinpoint what foods may cause more digestive distress than others. We are all different. We are all bio-individually different, and that is a beautiful thing. So what may cause digestive upset for me versus one of you is completely different. And a food that may seemingly be a delicious and healthy food could also potentially be causing some disruption. Maybe there's a lack of digestive enzymes. Perhaps we ate it too quickly. There's a myriad of different reasons as to why a seemingly healthy food could be causing this discomfort. However, when we do put on that investigator hat and we pay attention to what we eat and how we eat it, that's where the magic starts to happen. So now that we have the foundation of understanding the mechanics of bloat, at least top line, Let's get into my 10 absolute favorite hacks that will burst that bloat seemingly overnight. If you can incorporate two to four of these in your daily routine, I promise you, I absolutely promise you, you will be coming back to this video. You will be leaving a comment about how much better you're feeling and how much of a reduction in bloat you're experiencing. So I can't wait for those comments because I believe in all of you. And I know that there's an absolute better way to living and you do not have to suffer from daily discomfort when it comes to bloat. So the number one hack, of course, is to pay attention to food intolerances. 
So food allergies are definitely on the rise. There's a lot of reasons for this, and unfortunately, we don't have the time to get into that today. But in industrialized countries, food intolerances account for about 20% of the population, and that is just of people that are getting tested. So I would value to say that it's probably closer to 30 to 40%. So when we have those numbers and we think through those statistics, it is critically important that we pay attention to food intolerances. Three of the most most common, and this will not be surprising to you, are gluten, dairy, and caffeine. So many of these are monocropped foods, and so gluten has definitely been processed and produced in a way, in a capacity that it definitely was not when our parents were growing up, and most definitely our grandparents. So when we were stripping away a lot of the hull, the fiber, the nutrition in these grains, our body doesn't quite know how to break these down. Our body doesn't really recognize the food and therefore it doesn't know how to break this grain down and utilize it for its nutritional properties, which there are definitely nutritional benefits in whole grain foods that haven't been highly processed. And then there's of course dairy. Cows are meant to be outdoors and they are meant to eat grass. They are not meant to eat grains in corn and whatever else is being fed to these cows, unfortunately, in this industrialized society. So when we do consume dairy from a cow that has not been pasture raised, we are ingesting a host of different ingredients. And that could be from synthetic hormones to antibiotics. And then of course, the fact that the cow is producing milk in a capacity that cows are not meant to produce milk. When they're being fed super grains and super corns to you know, fatten them up to make them larger. And so unfortunately, dairy can most definitely be problematic. And then there's caffeine. You've heard me talk so many times about moldy beans and the integrity of our coffee. So coffee is obviously a stimulant and it can cause digestive upset. And so we have to be smart and strategic about our coffee and caffeine consumption. I will list some of my favorite organic coffee brands for you guys in the description box down below, but getting pesticide-free, mold-free caffeine in coffee beans is very, very important. But if you're somebody that every time you eat corn or every time you have soy, you have a reaction to these foods, or maybe it's something that's healthy like strawberries or pineapple, I would encourage you to, again, write this down. Keep a daily journal, keep a daily log of the foods that you're eating. And then after you finish a meal, note if something has caused that digestive upset and blow, because that's when we become that detective and we can kind of pinpoint what some of the culprits may be. My second hack is to reach for foods with added digestive benefits. You all know my love for fiber, but I'm also a big fan of vitamin C and antioxidants for our digestive health. I'm also a huge fan of foods like bone broth for their mineral and glycine profiles and amino acids. When we consume foods like sweet potatoes with that beautiful starch and fiber and carbohydrate, spinach, blueberries, avocados with healthy fats, all of these foods have added benefits that not only benefit the digestive tract, but they actually increase the amount of good bacteria that we have. So this will pay dividends over time as we're looking to rebuild and strengthen our gut health. My third hack is to practice mindful eating. I have talked about this so much here on my channel, but I will continue this conversation. If you are sitting down and you're eating your lunch and you're scrolling on your phone, whether it's through YouTube shorts, TikTok, Instagram reels, Instagram stories, that cortisol spike is not conducive for breaking down and assimilating our foods. Likewise, if you're sitting down and just eating dinner in front of the television, we want to be slow, mindful, and intuitive during mealtime. One, so that we know when we are actually full and satiated. Two, because when our body is in a state of fight or flight, a stress response due to something we saw on the news or on our phone or a triggering post on social media, this is not a good position to be in when we are distracted, when we are hyper-focused on this adrenaline roller coaster of our phone and or the television or screens. That rest and digest is very real and it is so important for our overall digestive system and especially for bloat. My fourth hack is if you are somebody who really does struggle 
with that overall bloat at the end of the day when things are really swollen and uncomfortable, that I would highly encourage you to eat lighter meals at the end of the day. So kind of stack your day heavy. So earlier in the day, maybe you can enjoy one of my smoothies from the Living Well membership or from one of the many smoothie videos I have here on my channel. I will link that for you up here in the cards, but maybe you could enjoy a smoothie with a few eggs scrambled over a piece of sourdough toast with some avocado on it. You could eat your heavier meals earlier in the day. Then maybe for lunch, you have a large salad with a chicken breast and potentially like half of a sweet potato so that you're very full and nourished. Then by the evening time, potentially we have a broth-based soup that's rich and bone broth full of really soft vegetables. Maybe it's even been cooked in the instant pot for a few hours to help break down these foods in the phytic acid. And that allows it to be easier to digest later in the day. So if you are somebody who really does experience that extreme bloat, I encourage you to eat heavier in the morning and then whittle your way down to lighter meals in the evening. If you are a subscriber of my channel, then you know I am a huge fan of strategic supplementation. And when dealing with blow, we can most definitely rely on some strategic supplementation. So if you watch any of my videos that I show my morning routine, then this will not be a shock to you. Every single night in my Yeti, I scoop out a few different powders. I put it into the cup. It's ready to go with a little mechanical whisker. So the next morning when I wake up, pour my coffee and I'm off to the races. And so a few of my absolute favorite supplements to put into my coffee, but you can really put this into any hot beverage is organic inulin powder. This is just a beautiful plant fiber. And I love to use this because one, I'm a huge fan of fiber in general, but two, this is just a really great way to one, make your coffee a little bit more filling and it helps assist your body and your insulin levels. Sometimes people can be hyper responsive to coffee first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. But if we add in a little bit of fiber and protein, which we will get to next, it helps stabilize your blood sugar levels. So I love to add that into the coffee as well as collagen powder. And collagen is incredible for our digestion digestive system. It is rich in glycine. It is also rich in amino acids. And all of these nutrients are beautiful in assisting our digestive system. Another great ingredient is gelatin. So different than collagen, gelatin is what makes that jello texture. So you can use this in different baked goods. You can use this in homemade jello. You can use this in homemade gummies, which is one of my favorite things to do for the kids. I love to make them mineral gummies. Gelatin is an unbelievable nutrient for helping that overall digestive tract, especially if we're thinking that there might be a little bit of leaky gut. And last, but certainly not least, of course, a probiotic. You know that I have a few different favorites. So one of course is from Seed and the other one is from Just Thrive Probiotic. Those two hands down are my most recommended probiotics. I will link them for you in the description box down below. I have so many of the ladies inside the Living Well membership hooked on the seed probiotic. I've been using it now for about two years and I'm somebody who typically bounces around, whether it's from Clear Labs or Standard Process Pro, Symbiotic, all of those are great, but this one has been an absolute game changer for me. I am not somebody who experiences a ton of bloat. I include a lot of fiber and gut healing foods into my daily protocol, but so many of the women inside the Living Well membership said that this has reversed their bloat and they have been bloat free for months ever since adding this one in. So I will have this linked for you as well in the description box with my discount code. My sixth hack is to drink plenty of water. Staying hydrated is critical to reducing bloat. Oftentimes we overeat, we overindulge, and we eat a larger portion than we need to simply because we are indeed dehydrated. Hydration is both a long-term and short-term tip to reducing bloat. And then when you add in some specialty herbs like rosemary and basil and ginger, all of these things I have shared a ton about, and I will link some videos for you up here in the cards as well as the description box down below. But all of these herbal benefits are unbelievable for anti-inflammatory properties, digestive help, and so they help reduce the overall gas and digestive 
of upset in your stomach and your gut. And then ultimately staying hydrated is one of the best things that we can do for our digestive system. Contrary to what many believe, when you are dehydrated, your body holds fluid. And that water retention could be responsible for causing some of this uncomfortable bloat. So staying hydrated is so important. And obviously I'm a huge fan of drinking water, but I love love, love herbal tea. I feel like I talk about herbal tea in almost every single video, whether it is lemon balm tea, Tulsi tea, peppermint tea, spearmint tea. I drink tea all day, every day, regardless of the season. I'm a big fan of drinking tea. Peppermint tea, spearmint tea, these are beautiful teas that you can consume. So I would also encourage you to add tea into your routine because it does help with that digestive assistance. And then if you aren't a coffee drinker, you could dissolve in inulin or your collagen into your tea. It will not interfere with the taste, but peppermint and ginger tea, Tulsi tea, all of these teas have nervine properties that help assist in digestion. They can help with constipation, protein breakdown. So not only does sipping on tea, of course, add to your hydration, but it helps from a mechanical perspective as well in the digestive tract to help your body move through some of that uncomfortableness to reduce the overall feelings of bloat. My eighth tip is to assess your fiber intake. I feel like I talk about fiber and I have been for four years here on my YouTube channel. I think that fiber is the most underrated nutrient group. I think that we should be consuming at a minimum of 40 grams of fiber per day, but in a very smart way. If you are somebody who really struggles with bloat, then I would encourage you to blend your fiber in a smoothie. I would encourage you to cook your fiber in a soup. That way we're still able to get in these fiber rich foods, but it's not in a raw form that could be part of the reason that we're experiencing the bloat in the first place. So I love roughage. So whether it's broccoli sprouts, broccoli, cruciferous vegetables, like cabbage and cauliflower, these are some of my favorite foods. However, if you're really struggling right now, we may want to cook them down, throw them in the Instant Pot or blend them up to help your body use these nutrients. But on the other side of the coin, we can include things like chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, bananas, oats, gluten-free, of course. These foods, on the other hand, have a rich source of fiber, but tend to be a bit more digestible. So I would encourage you to really assess your fiber intake and aim for at least 40 grams per day in a smart capacity. The lemon ginger tonic is by far the number one thing I feel like I am known for. And so ginger should probably be your best friend if you are somebody who suffers from bloat. And Mainly, why don't we take it up a notch and consider the lemon ginger tonic your best friend? I will put the I will put a video up here in the cards as well as the description box down below, but I encourage everybody to start their day with the lemon ginger tonic. What this does, it helps flush out any bile from overnight. It helps the body finish off that detoxification. It also helps with encouraging healthy morning bowel movements so that way we can really get things moving and grooving first thing in the morning, which is critical to reducing bloat. And ginger in general helps with nausea, digestive health. It's a beautiful compound because it is anti-inflammatory and it feeds the good bacteria in your digestive system. So if you are not drinking the lemon ginger tonic on a daily basis, then I would highly encourage you to do so. Last but certainly not least, my 10th tip is to walk it out. I'm a big fan of getting 12K steps per day. I talk about this all of the time. I love to get outdoors, even when it is cold and snowy. I encourage you to try your best to hit at least 10,000 steps per day. If you move your body frequently, it helps our digestive system tremendously. It doesn't need to be an intense workout. It just needs to be frequent movement. And after that lunch that we mindfully ate, that we didn't scarf down, if you get up and you do a 10 minute walk afterwards, it will help your digestive system so much. You will break down your foods easier. You will assimilate those nutrients and you will actually use the phyto compounds in the foods more readily. So this light movement can help propel the gas and any digestive distress that may be happening internally. So moving and getting outside, getting fresh air, all of this just propels us to the next level of feeling better. To me, this is one of the quickest and fastest ways to de-bloat your stomach. 
So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, you can let me know by giving it a big thumbs up. And now the subscribe button is right over here on the screen. Give that a click. That way you don't miss a single video. And I hope to see you back here next Thursday.